Hello, friends and fellow lovers of all things beachy. Welcome to The Beach Speaks. I'm your host and beach lover, Paige Friend, sharing conversations and stories to help you reconnect with the beach, return to your soul, and reimagine your life. Whether they're an entrepreneur, a conscious creator, or just someone who loves the beach, all my guests have a story to tell about what makes the beach the place to be. So grab a cool drink, sit back in your beach chair, stick your toes in the sand, and enjoy this episode of The Beach Speaks. Hey, beach lover. One morning, I was in the back of the house at my office desk, staring at the computer screen, deeply engrossed in downloading a bunch of audio files, when Ernie called out to me from his desk in the front of the house. Hey, babe, I have to go to a conference in Jensen Beach. Do you want to go? I heard the word beach, and in a nanosecond, I snapped out of my computer stupor and said, Yeah, that sounds great. Then I thought, where's Jensen Beach? It wasn't on my beach bucket list. And the name sounded kind of familiar, like maybe it had come up briefly in a conversation. I knew it was in Florida, somewhere on the Atlantic coast. So I searched Google Maps and it was a beach on Hutchison Island, down the Atlantic coast about a three and a half hour drive from where we are. And since I had heard people say great things about Hutchison Island, I assumed Jensen Beach would be fabulous. When I think about my 2023 beach bucket list, the ones that are at the top are mostly on the Gulf Coast. The beaches that are on every travel guide's top 10 Florida beaches like Kaya Costa, Captiva Island, Sanibel, and Pensacola. Then, of course, it's always interesting to find the occasional remote beach that only the locals know about, or the ones where there are no hotels or Airbnbs, just tent camping. That's part of the adventure. Adventure or not, at least this trip would be a brief getaway from the cold and rain we had here at home. And I kept looking at my weather app, praying that it would be nice enough to be able to enjoy some sun and sand. And I told myself not to get too wrapped up in the weather because regardless, I can make the best of it. I was three days away from a deadline that I had set for myself to publish my next podcast. And I still had a lot of work to do, finishing the editing and putting it all together. And it was not going well. But all I need to hear are the four words, go to the beach, and I don't care how much work I have to do or what deadline I have to meet, I'm going. The night before we left, I stared blankly at my open and empty suitcase, trying to figure out what to wear. The forecast for Jensen Beach called for sunny skies and low to mid-70s during the day and 50s at night. So I decided to pack a little of everything. Jeans, some shorts, tank tops, t-shirts, a jacket, and of course, (laughs) flip-flops. And if I needed anything else, I figured I would just pick it up at the nearest surf shop when we get there. I didn't do much research about the conference hotel. I knew it was right on the beach, but I expected it would be just kind of the type of large convention ones like in Daytona or Cocoa Beach. So I was a little surprised to see that the hotel was more like a small boutique resort than a conference center. There was an indoor-outdoor restaurant, spa, and two pools. And best of all, we had an oceanfront room. There were only five floors in this hotel, and our room was on the third. And I was expecting that, like most oceanfront hotel rooms, there would be a nice view and maybe a small balcony. However, 
when I swiped the key card, turned the handle to open the door, I took just a few steps in and froze. Just for a moment, in surprise and delight. The room was almost exactly like the one where I had stayed on the coast of Italy. The elegant European-style navy blue and white decor, an elegant bathroom with two luxurious white bathrobes hanging in the closet, and sliding glass doors that opened up to a full-size balcony with a small round table and two chairs. I rushed across the room to the balcony. Not only was our view over the ocean, when I leaned over the railing and looked down, all there was between us and the beach was about 25 yards of sand dunes. I had never been this close to the beach in a hotel room. The sun was sparkling like diamonds over the beautiful aqua blue expanse of ocean, and as I looked at the horizon where the water and sky meet, In my mind's eye, I imagined I could see all the way to Italy. (laughs) I immediately grabbed my phone and took a bunch of photos and then closed my eyes and listened to the waves, imagining how wonderful it was going to be opening the window at night and fall asleep to the sound. I turned to Ernie with tears in my eyes, and at that moment we both agreed that instead of leaving right after the conference, we needed to book an extra day. And before I knew it, Ernie had gone down to the lobby and back, and not only was he able to add another day, he was able to convince the clerk to give us the conference rate. My hero. (laughs) Although the stretch of beach we were on wasn't exactly private, it really felt like it was. And there wasn't a wide expanse of sand like Daytona or here at Jacksonville Beach, but There appeared to be plenty of room to walk barefoot and collect shells. I couldn't wait to get out there. But I actually had a lot of work to do to get the latest podcast finished, so I knew I couldn't spend all my time at the beach. Still, it really didn't bother me that much because all I needed to do was open up the sliders, set up a makeshift office on the patio, and I was sure I could finish it all in time to get to enjoy the beach. But I ended up spending a lot more time working than I had hoped. I was running up along all kinds of tech issues and pretty much stressing myself out over some arbitrary deadline that I would created for myself. The beach was speaking to me, and I wasn't listening. The beach was saying, Paige, drop the deadline. It's Friday. It's not the end of the world if you wait until after the weekend. Relax, get your feet in the sand and feel the sun on your face. My inner voice was saying, Paige, just power through, get it done, and then you can relax and enjoy. The thing is, I didn't want to power through and create something that I knew would not be my best work just for the sake of getting it done. So I took a deep breath, put my ego on pause, walked out on the balcony and looked out at the beautiful water and really listened with my heart, not my head. And after a few more deep breaths, I went back into the room, closed my laptop, gathered my planner and notebooks and put it all in the closet. I scooped up my beach bag and headed down to spend the rest of the day relaxing in the sun. And as I was walking on the beach and picking up shells, it occurred to me that I was working on the podcast, just in a whole other way. By staying present and listening to what the beach was saying to me, the message I heard was, surrender to the beach, trust it, let it guide you. And I was so grateful I listened because I got to enjoy the last day of nice weather before it unexpectedly turned cold and windy, and it even dropped into the 30s overnight. Still, in the morning, I was able to relax and take in the beautiful sunrise wrapped in my cozy hotel bathrobe, sipping coffee, before packing up and heading home on a leisurely drive up the coastline. And on the drive home, I thought about my beach bucket list. 
One of the reasons I love exploring new beaches and revisiting old ones is each one has a different message for me. If I listen. I already know about most of the beaches on my list for this year, but I'm beginning to think that my favorite beaches are going to be the one I don't know yet. And what I don't know, the beach knows. I just have to listen. How is the beach speaking to you today? Thank you for listening to this episode of The Beach Speaks. If you liked what you heard, share the podcast with another beach lover. And speaking of sharing, I want to know how the beach is speaking to you. Share your favorite beach story or why you love the beach so much. Maybe you have a beachy tip or two that you think other beach lovers might like to know. To record a message, just go to my website, thebeachspeaks.com, Click the voicemail button, it's super easy, and I'll play it on the show. And if more beach is what you crave, visit thebeachspeaks.com or follow The Beach Speaks on Facebook and Instagram, where I post all my gorgeous sunrise photos and videos. It's another way for you to reconnect with the beach, return to your soul, and reimagine your life. The Beach is speaking. Are you listening?